This is a video about UPS types and uh, how they work. Uh, visual explanation of uninterruptible power supplies, how uh, they operate, and it will be followed with a comparison of features. Uh, let's start out with the uh, transient voltage and surge suppressor, or TVSS. And uh, I'm going to basically power in and power out. Uh, as this operates, it's a surge. Uh, you see power on the line. And then you see as a surge comes in, basically, this blocks them from passing through. Next thing we'll look at is a automatic voltage regulator. This uh, comes in a variety of forms. It's been around for quite a while. Uh, essentially, uh, we power this up, and uh, when we have a larger incoming voltage, the output stays essentially the same. And also, if we go with a lower uh, input voltage, uh, Again, we'll step it up so that we have essentially the same output voltage. Now we'll take uh, its surge filter, move it to the end, and take a look at a um, standby UPS. This is sort of the lowest level of the UPS and uh, basically provides a battery uh, backup. So we'll start with the battery and the inverter to convert that DC voltage from the battery to AC. Put those together, and now uh, we'll put a transfer switch in line, connect that to the converter, uh, put in a battery charger to uh, charge the battery, uh, connect that to the uh, power coming in, and connect that to the battery. Put in a control circuit. Uh, this will be the circuit in place uh, where it receives um, voltage information from the battery. Uh, in turn, it'll be able to uh, turn on the battery charger um, when that voltage is too low. Uh, to look at the incoming line voltage, and if that voltage uh, is out of uh, specification for what it's supposed to be, it can activate the inverter and also uh, has a uh, connection to the transfer switch so it can transfer over to battery power. Uh, there'll be an alarm circuit. And uh, this will be uh, designed to tell you that something is uh, out of whack with the uh, system. So I'm powering this up. We'll see that uh, we end up with power to the battery charger and going through the filter at the end and to the output. We have an alarm set right here. And it's because uh, the battery uh, is discharged. It needs to charge up. So we're showing a discharged battery alarm. Uh, the control circuit will turn on the battery charger, which sends power to the battery. Uh, when the battery has uh, charged up, we'll see it sends out power to the voltage, tells the control circuit, which is able to shut off the charger. When the power goes out to this unit, uh, we'll see that uh, we set an alarm, and a number of things happen. But basically, the control circuit uh, turns on the inverter, flips the transfer switch, and now we have an alarm set uh, because of the fact that the uh, there is no power on the input. So again, uh, going back to our standby mode with a charged battery, uh, we'll look at uh, one more time loss of power and alarm signal from the control circuit and the transfer switch and we have the power coming out. Next we'll look at the um, another type of variation of the uh, standby UPS. Uh, move that control circuit a bit and we'll place in an automatic voltage regulator. This um, gives us the line interactive type of UPS and it's uh, an enhancement of that uh, standby type in that it also uh, it adds the features of the automatic voltage regulator so that it doesn't go into battery mode with the same uh, narrow range of voltages. So it enhances the performance by reducing the amount of uh, the conditions under which it would be under battery. And the next type of um, UPS uh, is the online UPS. Uh, this one uses different stages. It's uh, quite a bit different uh, from the way that they stand by. We start out with um, uh, transient suppression and uh, filters on the input. Uh, we have a uh, rectifier uh, 
power factor correction stage um, inverter, which is what we also had um, with the standby UPS, and then finally an output filter. We basically uh, connect these together after the input filter is a rectifier, it converts to DC, and if DC goes into an inverter, uh, which in turn goes to the output filter, and it provides uh, the output of the unit. So essentially, um, this works full time uh, running these stages. And now we add some components to that. Put a transfer switch in here, although not for the same purpose as on the standby UPS. Um, this is basically a uh, transfer switch that's used to uh, transfer around the whole uh, UPS to take it out of the uh, circuit. Uh, we'll have a battery, a DC to DC converter, uh, which will be hooked up to the battery, and that in turn will provide uh, power to the inverter. We'll have a battery charger, which is hooked up to the line voltage coming in, and that of course will charge the battery. Uh, control circuit, uh, that'll look at the input voltage, uh, it'll uh, have the ability to control the DC to DC converter, turn that on when needed. Uh, it'll check the battery voltage and the ability to turn on the battery charger to charge the battery. And then it'll look at the output voltage and have the ability to operate the transfer switch. And finally, there'll be some alarms and the control circuit will be able to turn on those alarms. So when we power this unit up, uh, we see that it uh, provides power to the battery charger, which is not on. Uh, it goes through all the stages and uh, provides uh, voltage output. Uh, notice that uh, all the voltage that's provided at the output is coming through the uh, rectifier and inverter. So this one is constantly has those online. It's not just when the power goes out, but there's always that um, total isolation between the input and the output and that the whole input uh, power is converted to output. Now we have an alarm on because of uh, the fact the battery needs to be charged. So that's detected as a battery voltage. When that uh, goes up, it turns off the charger. So now we have a fully uh, charged battery. Uh, if we lose power, you see that there's not a whole lot of change, nothing really transfers. We have an alarm for the loss of power. We basically, the battery is providing the DC that goes to the inverter instead of the rectifier. So no transfer, uh, it's, it's no uh, break whatsoever in the output voltage. Now we'll uh, go back to the normal condition on the UPS and we'll look at uh, another possible fault condition that could occur with uh, the UPS. And that would be if we lose output from the inverter or the output filter. You see, as that goes away, um, that will set an alarm. The control circuit detects that and flips the transfer switch so that now the UPS is no longer in the circuit and the output comes directly from the input. So this would be uh, in the case of uh, something goes wrong with the UPS. Now there is very brief delay, not enough to really be a problem, but this is where there's a transfer delay on the online UPS. Uh, the line interactive has a transfer delay on the, uh, when there's a fault on the input power. So now we'll look at a comparison of the features of uh, these two uh, principal types of UPS, which would be the line interactive and the online. Um, the uh, line interactive is very little more expensive than the standby type. So uh, most of the ones, particularly uh, commercial use, are the line interactive at the lower end. Uh, the line interactive has a lower initial cost than the online. Uh, it's because uh, it doesn't have as large uh, components in it in terms of the uh, uh, rectifier. and uh, It's not working the same uh, amount of time. The line interactive is uh, typically a uh, larger fiscal size online. Uh, would usually be somewhat smaller. Uh, 
uh, line interactive operates at a higher efficiency because of the fact that most of the time um, the inverter doesn't have to uh, operate. And so uh, it can charge the batteries up and then provide um, very little um, power consumption from the unit itself. It's just passing the power through. Because of the fact that it's doing less during normal operation, it produces less heat uh, as part of that efficiency. Um, however, since the line interactive has not quite the range of uh, input voltages that it can handle, uh, typically the line interactive might uh, go from uh, 90 to 140 volts that it can regulate the power and still produce the say a nominal 120 if it were operating normally at that range uh, and the uh, online may go as low as uh, 60 and up to uh, 150 160 uh, there are less circumstances for the uh, uh, online to actually be going into batteries and so batteries are under less stress so typically the longer battery life on the online and uh, that can actually make up totally from the difference in the initial cost. As we said the line interactive would spend more time in the battery than the online. The probably the, the principal downside of the, uh, the line interactive would be that uh, a UPS is sometimes uh, required to deal with legacy equipment issues. Uh, modern uh, electronic equipment, computer equipment uh, is able to handle uh, brief outages, has a, a reasonable um, input uh, power factor, and uh, doesn't require the kind of power conditioning um, that the older equipment did. So if you had older equipment, uh, you can have problems both with the operation from line voltage fluctuations that are totally isolated with the online uh, UPS and also that equipment can cause power factor issues um, with the uh, utility with the power that's coming in uh, to the building so the online can totally isolate that uh, legacy equipment and prevent problems both in the building and problems with the equipment itself so this would be uh, sort of a comparison line interactive is typically found in 5 kVA and under um, online is available in those sizes, but beyond that, it, online is a uh, more common UPS. Further information, uh, go to drinfrastructure.com.